Hello, my name is Chloe by Vignola. I am going to present to you today the way to make Florentines at home. Florentines were always my favorite growing up in Montreal. We would get it as a treat at the pastry shop, but I found out recently that you can actually make your own. So that's very dangerous and very exciting at the same time. So for the caramel part of the Florentines, you will need a quarter cup of honey, a quarter cup of uh, heavy cream, the whipping cream, a half a cup of whole brown sugar, two tablespoons of unsalted butter. For the chunky bits, you'll have a cup and a half of raw, roughly chopped almonds. You'll have the chunks of ginger chopped some incan berries that I've soaked overnight to keep them moist. And for the chocolate part, well, just the beautiful chocolate domes, uh, dark chocolate with a little bit of coconut oil. As you can see, we're using quite a lot of rancho products here, and that's beautiful because they're so fresh and natural and good for you. Preheat your oven to 350. Then to make the caramel, put your sugar in, your cream, your butter and your honey and start to put it on the stove at low heat. So now my butter has melted. What I'm going to do is put it up to medium and watch for those first bubbles to start. Once the bubbles start, we're gonna time ourselves to four minutes and that's the time that we need for the caramel to have just the right texture. When they reach the middle, when it's all bubbling, that's when we time. At this point, you have to resist the temptation to stir. That looks pretty good. We start our timer. Four minutes. Resist the temptation to stir. Just leave it. Caramel is forming this way. It does something that I can't explain. It's all chemistry. In the last minute, you can test it a little bit with your spoon and see if it looks like it wants to be a caramel. And you can see it already does. It's been four minutes. <laughs> now you can cut your fire and you get this nice caramelly substance. Now is the time to put your chunks in it. So I chose today to put some almonds and incan berries and uh, crystallized ginger, but you could put anything that you really like. As long as you have a nut base and some fruits that will stand out. And this is the base of your biscuit. So when I do uh, the cookies on a cookie sheet, they actually spread so much and start to burn really easy. So I found that the, the easiest way was to use the bottom of a mu muffin tin. One tablespoon per hole, I would say. Resist the temptation to eat the caramel right away because it's so hot, it will burn you. Ready to put in the oven. I'm timing these cookies for exactly five minutes uh, because sugar is really tricky. When it's overcooked, it starts to burn and smoke. Remove your Florentines from the oven. They're all nice and bubbly and somewhat malleable. So you can make them perfect at this point by taking a fork and even out the nuts and the fruit. So when they look perfect to you, you let them cool for about 15 minutes. When they're cool, you'll see that they're easy to unmold. Be careful you don't lose any fruit or nuts that could remain. Now they're soft enough to remove from the molds, but they're not hard enough to receive the chocolate. We need to cool them off a little bit more, then the chocolate can cool on top of the biscuit. The cookies don't come out the same way every time. Today, my cookies are a little bit soft, so I'm gonna choose to finish cooling them in the fridge. So when I put my layer of chocolate, it'll be nice and hard. You could use a double boiler because you need to heat up the chocolate really slowly, but right now, I'm just going to choose to put it on a low heat in a pan. Just make sure that you stir all the time. And if you're careful, you'll get a really beautiful chocolate. Your cookies are nice and cool. I'm flipping them to the shiny side. The rough side is the, the one that we want to show. 
and the shiny side here is the one that we want to coat with chocolate. A teaspoon of chocolate should suffice. Just pour the teaspoon in the middle and help it a little bit by spreading it around. And let it set to room temperature until the chocolate is hard enough that you can carve. If you're pressed with time or if the room temperature happens to be a bit warmer, like in the summer, then uh, you can put them in the fridge for about five minutes. Now my chocolate has changed consistency and I can start to carve. And this is how you carve the iconic waves of the Florentine. After I've done this, I will put them back in the fridge for about 10 to 15 minutes until it's set. Voila, 